which means I'm trying to match clothes for my kids to a dress that I don't currently have. Neither of these two are doing super great. And they were born this morning in the super cold and they are struggling. We're the Jonases. We're a family of 10 plus a few more. I'm the mom PJ with my husband Jim, our daughter Brett, our sons Coulter, Emery, Fletcher, Graydon, and Hewitt, and our daughters Indigo and Jade. We have our hands full with raising dairy goats on our farm, making goat milk soaps and other products from their milk, all while homeschooling and homesteading happily. We love our life and sharing how we live on the other side of the fence. I am here with Mystic's kid and with one of Ellen Way's kids and neither of these two are doing super great. And they were born this morning in the super cold and they are struggling. So we have them here under a heat lamp to see if we can't get them warm and we are going to work on getting them fed as soon as possible. Um, at least fed again as soon as possible so that they can um, hopefully start doing a little bit better. to get pretty much all of my dresses altered because I am a very short person. So my bridesmaid dresses are currently at the tailors getting altered, which means I'm trying to match clothes for my kids to a dress that I don't currently have, which is making it difficult. So I have a pile of clothes for my kids to try on so that I can see which ones fit best so that when my dresses get back this weekend, I can match them up and see which ones look the best so I can pick what my kids are gonna wear to the weddings. <laughs> Who were to describe Hewitt would be youngest brother. Boyish and sweet. Best word to describe is like toddler, like youthful. Describing Hewitt in one word, I would have to pick growth because he's in like a huge changing phase and like every time you think you've like pegged him for being something, like he changes and grows and all of a sudden like he's developed a new trait or matured completely out of the phase that he was in. I guess I would describe him as a goofy surprise. Hewitt is fun loving. Hewitt is the fun goal, the fun uncle. So right now on the farm, I make all the soap. That is my job and that is what I'm responsible for. So I took over the soap making from my brother Fletcher. Since then, I've just been making the soap and pretty much all the soap in the soap room now has been made by me. I don't think there's really any leftover from Fletcher's time frame of working up here. So I do that as well as I'll mold the soap and I'll make the liquid soap for Indigo to package and ship out. But I love spending time with my siblings, whether that be playing a game with them, also spending time outside, really, um, playing Ultimate Frisbee. Um, and recently we got a hive of bees, which I'm starting to take care of, which I'm super excited about. He was biggest strength is his ability to operate under the radar. He learns things, he observes things, he thinks about things when you don't think there's anything going on up there. And he's almost subversive in his ability to impress you. Hewitt's got a real servant heart. He takes care of a lot of things for people. He takes care of his nephews and niece very much. He's uh, very willing to go and help people who are in need of help and um, he really he really likes to to serve people that are in need as long as everything's super slippery and lubed up and the way it's supposed to be working pulling is not going to cause any problems and again when I say pulling we're just talking about a very gentle guiding but you are putting some pressure on to help that baby almost fall out. Jade has a saying, she likes to say, that mama farted it out. 
She hates us bringing that up because she did it when she was probably eight years old. <laughs> Second or third one she ever did. And mom's like, wow, that came quick. And she's just like, yep, mama just farted it out. And we, we all give her a hard time for it. We have Nigerian dwarfs and alpines on the farm. Nigerians are very small. They, the adults weigh about 90 to 60 pounds. Um, some that's a very broad range. So we've had some go up to 120. We've had some as small as 40 pounds as adults. Um, when they're born, their babies are about two and a half to three and a half pounds. Um, again, that's a very broad range. We've had some up to six, and some as small as one and a half. Um, between comparing the Nigerians and the Alpines, I think the Nigerians have a lot more personality, especially as adults. Um, they are very, very mischievous. They'll get in all the trouble that they can. Any any hole in the fence, they will find it. Any um, problem with the fence or any track that gets in the pen, that's what they will go for. The Alpine, you can usually trust them to be a little self-aware and preserve their health. The Nigerians, not near as much. They usually have about two to three, sometimes even four, kids at a time. It's pretty rare for them just to have one. It's not unheard of at all. So does this be part of premarital counseling is playing pickleball side by side? I am so glad I built this court. We have had so much fun, and we don't even have the lines drawn yet. Right now, we're not even playing real games. We're just kind of like, the goal is to get it over the net. It's not even trying to score points or see who could win. And my competitive family, once we start keeping track of points, is gonna get a little, little hairy. But everybody is playing. Um, and the children come out and play. I play with my husband, who would take breaks and come out and do it. And uh, I think probably one of the best things that happened that made me feel like it was the absolute right thing was when Brett said to me, Mom, she said, thank you for building the pickleball court because Mason and I are playing on it together. And that was something with three little kids, they don't get a lot of stuff like they can do like that together. And so that was just best decision ever. I am surprised at how much I like playing pickleball. I am not an athletic person. My siblings all ran cross country together. I did not. My siblings all play ultimate frisbee together. I do not. I don't like running. I don't like being active. I like sitting and reading a book. So when mom said she was putting in this pickleball court and that she wanted me to play with her, I was apprehensive. But I actually really like it. Although I think I am the least athletic person out there. They're all like running and diving when the ball goes and I'm just like, bye ball. <laughs> I'll get you later, I'm not chasing you. <laughs> Pickleball is not exactly my sport. Um, I'm not fantastic at it, which definitely makes it harder for me to really enjoy it. We also don't have the lines painted yet and so it's a little hard to be super competitive and that's kind of like number one thing that attracts me to a sport is being able to win. I do not like playing pickleball actually. Um, I would much rather play volleyball. I enjoy being active whatever the sport we're playing. I have a rough relationship with pickleball. I like it, but I'm usually pretty good at most sports that I start at, and I was really not good at pickleball. So I have a really hard time playing it when there's like volleyball right next to it, which I enjoy playing more. Um, so I do play it occasionally with my parents, but not as often as I probably should. Do I like playing pickleball? Um, it's growing on me. When I told Lucky, our contractor, that I wanted to build a pickleball court. He just kind of looked at me funny, but Lucky's gotten some pretty strange 
requests for me in the past. And so he asked me, he's like, well, how often do you play? And I was like, oh, I've never played pickleball. And he's like, you want to build a pickleball court, but you've never played pickleball. And I was like, yeah, it's going to be great. We're going to have so much fun. It's like the fastest growing sport in the country. People of all ages can play. This is going to be awesome. He's like, okay. It is not a great day here in the barn. We have these two who are finally doing better. They're standing up. They are warm. We were able to get some food into their stomach, but we had three more that now are not doing so well. Um, so Enchanted is by far the worst. Um, we are watching her very carefully. Um, we got some um, Nutri-Drench in her to see if that will help, and we have these three all in here warming up because all of their temperatures are far too low. So, um, Ella and Emma, these two, this is Emma, this is Ella, these two are doing okay. They're just um, very, very cold, and so we're warming them up, but Enchanted um, does not seem to have much strength. Um, she's not able to eat anything. She's cold. Her temperature is crashing, so we are doing everything we can for her. Um, but it's looking like we might have to tube feed her because we're not sure she has the strength to be able to feed herself. This is Ellen Way, the mom. She um, had quads. The fourth one, or the first one, was a stillborn. Um, was, did not make it. Um, and then these are her three daughters here. Um, she is doing okay, but she is, seems to be in a little bit of pain. Um, <clears throat> signs of grinding her teeth, yawning, and she is having um, some trouble with her placenta. So she still has her placenta and has not managed to pass that yet. Trying to find outfits for my kids for two weddings at the same time was strange because uh, they were both blue, but the one was navy and the other was like lighter shades of blue. And one was a beach wedding and very informal and the other was a formal wedding. And so I ordered a whole bunch of different clothes on Amazon. I ordered like four different dresses for Kylie and like three different options for the boys. And we had to get them to try them on so I could see A, what fit and B, what worked with the clothes. And to complicate matters, I didn't even have my dresses because the first dress that I got for Lainey and Graydon's wedding fit me like a tent. It was huge. It was not the right size whatsoever. So it was just this big ordeal. And of course, when we were trying them on, the kids did not want to try them on. <laughs> Michael was throwing a fit because he didn't want to put the shirt on. And Kylie was just running away as fast as her little legs could take her. And Landon, uh, Landon didn't mind too much because he got to dress up with Anna Indigo, so that made him happy. But uh, Michael was not a fan of trying on the clothes. Michael. Again, I didn't know exactly what shade of blue I was gonna be wearing and I wanted it to look good with me because if we're all going to get dressed up, I might as well get some cute family photos out of it. Today we're hosting two bridal showers in one for Ashton and Lainey. So we ended up having a joint bridal shower for Ashton and Lainey here at the park. Having two sons getting married two weeks apart has been a little bit... Stressful. ...of a challenge. <laughs> we'll, just, we'll just put it that way. Not that you and I are doing all that much work. We really well, haven't. They're all doing that. But it's just, it's a little bit of a of a challenge. And so with There's all... There's a lot going on that all of us are very involved in. And so it's just been a lot. <laughs> yeah. And so when, you know, my poor family, our poor extended family who all live out of state are like, 
two weddings. We have to travel for two weddings and then two, two bridal weeks apart. showers. Yeah, two bridal showers. You have two bridal showers. Oh, and it's also graduation. You know, May is graduation month, so yeah. my nephew is getting graduating and, and whatnot. And so we decided it would be really great to simplify and have the bridal showers, both of them, on the same day. It made things a lot easier for our side of the family so that they didn't have to come up yeah. because none of our family is local. They're all multiple hours away or in Florida. <laughs> yeah. So it's not like they can just jump over for in a New day. New Jersey, New Hampshire, in right. North Carolina. I mean, we have They're a lot of all, all over. over the place. Yeah. So it was helpful. Having it worked them well. In the same it day. worked very well. It worked well in my We mind. had two hours in the early afternoon at like one early. and then an hour break and then the two hours afterwards. And so it was like they each had their own event. We did keep the same decorations. We didn't change decorations. That is true. Which was good. <laughs> I don't like decorating either. We didn't need either. to do a whole decoration turnover in an hour. It no, was fine. no. It was a good feat. And we kept the presents separate because we initially had the presents kind of in the same area. And um, Ashton was having, a, like this was Lainey's only bridal shower, but Ashton was having a separate one for her side of the family, so um, she had fewer guests. So I was like, let's separate the presents. Let's not put them on the same spot because it's looking a little bit lopsided here. So we had two separate areas and it worked really well. Yeah. My favorite part was when we dressed them up as two toilet paper brides at and, the end. Yeah. <laughs> they interacted really well because they're friends. Like, I, you know, if it was two complete strangers. Right. Not hopefully you would never have two complete strangers <laughs> about to be marrying, you know. <laughs> but they each enjoyed it, and I think for me, probably my favorite part of the bridal showers was how happy Ashton was. She just smiled the yeah, whole time, it was great. and that I think that was my favorite part of the whole thing. but they are doing so much better. As you can see, they're both standing now. Um, Moneyball is um, starting to be vocal. He's starting to perk up um, and actually react to things and not just laying there. So um, super happy to see both of them perking up and getting um, a little bit um, more active. Here is Moneyball chowing down on his bottle. Um, so that's definitely some good news. Um, earlier he was too weak to be able to really eat much. Um, he could barely get a few gulps down. Um, and at this point he is able to drink um, from the bottle and actually um, get a decent amount of food into his stomach. So that's good. Um, you can hear him. He is just doing so much better and perking up really well. So that's really, really good news. It is matinee's turn to eat, and he is eating pretty well as um, well, so that's good news. Um, not eating quite as well as Moneyball did, but pretty darn close, um, and just a complete turnaround from earlier when they were too weak to like eat anything. Um, now they are both able to um, consume the food that they need and just super excited to see them perking up and actually acting like baby goats. Um, the difference in the strength that they're showing from even just a few hours ago to now is fantastic and really gives me hope that they're gonna pull through and be able to um, make it back outside um, into the baby pen. We have hundreds of babies born every year and we typically only have a few get sick every year. Moneyball and Matinee are brothers um, out of Mystic. Moneyball, um, unfortunately, did not make it. Moneyball was the only one of the five that were sick that was not uh, able to survive. So he was doing really well there for a while. We were really excited about it and he really started to eat and we thought he'd rounded the curve. Um, but unfortunately, in the end, he just didn't make it. So that was pretty hard to deal with. Anytime you lose a baby, it's very difficult. You know, there is good news in that um, not only was his brother Matinee um, able to make it and survive and thrive and do well, uh, we were also able to save the three triplets. So, you know, four out of five, we're, we're happy that we were able to save them. But Moneyball will, will always be the one that we remember. And I have still got a big 
snafu with my jacket because the one I ordered is too small, but they don't have any mediums in stock. And so it was like, okay, clearly these are quints out of Morocco. Mm -hmm. 